topic of restoration of aquatic and more specifically here marine environments is something that's uh, very complex. How do we gauge ecosystem health? If we take Point Cook Marine Sanctuary as an example, uh, it's certain that there are some areas like this one that you're seeing here that look quite barren. Uh, for whatever reason, it's an area that's very, very popular with sponges. They love the area and there's some really nice flora and fauna growing here. Here's some King George whiting and some snapper, if you look in the background there, that agree. We're not seeing a hell of a lot of evidence of urchins here, so what we're looking at is distinguished from an urchin barren, but the one thing we're not seeing is what's here, the Aclonia radiata, uh, the native kelp. We see lots of Undaria pinnatifida, the introduced species from time to time, but not a lot of the uh, native kelp or macroalgal varieties. But before the eyes of developers who want to turn this area into a marina light up, um, it's important to remember that we're looking at some wonderful varieties of uh, soft corals and so on that grow in the area. So it is quite uh, rich from the uh, species richness point of view. Again, some hydroids here. Of course, you've got your Sabella and Undaria and these sorts of things. Once you remove these, the question is then what's the next step in restoration? One of the really difficult lessons about Undaria and urchin barrens, once you remove the urchins, once you take away the Undaria, Daria, it's still often very difficult for the native algae to grow back. It's thought that one of the key reasons behind this is you end up with an unconsolidated sediment matrix which sits on the bottom, makes it very difficult for the uh, new uh, native algae to germinate and also uh, filamentous algae that colonises the area and again makes it very hard for any spores to punch through the sediment.